The Jack Benny program. American. Fine tobacco is what counts in the cigarette. And LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. LSMFT. No doubt about it. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. That's one thing you can be sure of always. Year after year, at auction after auction, independent tobacco experts, men who really know tobacco, can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Real Lucky Strike tobacco. Fine tobacco that means real, deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully fat, so free and easy on the draw. <laughs> The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, John Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, last Friday, February 14th, was Jack Benny's birthday. Jack celebrated the occasion with a dinner party at his home. So let's go back to Friday and out to Beverly Hills, where we find Mary and Rochester helping out. Uh, Rochester, is Mr. Benny still upstairs? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. And they say women take a long time to get dressed. He's been up there two hours already. Well, with Mr. Benny's physique, dressing isn't so simple. What do you mean? By the time he pulls in what sticks out and tears out what sinks in, it's a new day, (laughs) manana. Well, he ought to be down pretty soon. Now, let's see. The table's all set. Oh, by the way, Rochester, are you going to serve our dinner? Yes, ma'am. Oh, that reminds me. I'd better take the caviar on the frigidaire. Caviar? Did Mr. Benny buy caviar? Well, uh, yes, indirectly. What do you mean, indirectly? Well, once a week we have fish for dinner. Uh-huh. And before I go to the market, Mr. Benny tells me to pick out a sturgeon with that maternal look. <laughs> Well, well, Mary, I'm all dressed. How's everything going? Oh, fine, Jack. And while you were dressing, these telegrams came. I already opened them. You did? Well, read them to me. Okay. Dear Jack, sorry I won't be able to attend your birthday party as I have a touch of flu. Signed, Jane Wyman. Hmm. Too bad. Uh, Here's another. Dear Jack, sorry I won't be able to attend your birthday party as I have a touch of grip. Signed, Claudette Colbert. Gee. Oh, here's another. Mm. Dear Jack, sorry I won't be able to attend your birthday party as I have a touch of distemper, signed glasses. <laughs> well, then we can leave the bone in the soup. Huh? Is, uh, is that all? Uh, no, there's one more. Oh, this one's from Leo DeRosa. Oh, Leo, huh? Yeah, he says, uh, Dear Jack, I'm sorry I can't bring my wife to your birthday party as I'm a single man in California. <laughs> See, that's a shame. Anyway, I'm sure the party will be a success. I'm having Isaac Stern and Mr. and Mrs. Coleman. Rochester, what are you doing? I'm putting the champagne labels on the (laughs) 7 up. I'm not serving that tonight. I'm having still wine. Uh, Which do you think would be better, Mary, red or white wine? Oh, I don't know. What are you having for your meat course? Oh, I'm having a Mont de Bois, Bourdain Porté. What's that? Hamburger! We're not having it as patties, we're having it as meatballs. And Rochester, when it's time to serve the meatballs, do it with a spoon. I mean, don't put three holes in them and roll them down the center of the table. <laughs> now, Mary, after everybody arrives, it's... You know, I wonder who that can be. Not too early for any of the guests. I'll get it. How do you do, Mr. Benny? My name's Brown. I represent the Lifetime Pop Pan and Kettle Company. May I come in for just a minute? Thank you. Look, I... This is my assistant, Joe Davidson. Oh, glad to know you. That goes double. Now, look, fellas. Now, Mr. Benny, as you are one of the leading citizens of Beverly Hills, we have selected you as the man who should have our first post-war demonstration given by the Lifetime Pop Pan and Kettle Company. Well, that's very nice, but I... We've to show you beyond the shadow of a doubt the superiority of our product over every other competitor in the field. What about it, Joe? That goes double. Look. The purpose of our visit is to come into your home and put on a dinner the like of which no king has ever eaten. Uh, look, gentlemen, I'd like to talk to you about this some other time. You see, today is my birthday, and I'm having some guests over for dinner. Did you hear that, Joe? What a coincidence. Mr. Benny, in one hour, we can have ready for you a complete seven-course dinner. I know. A prime rib roast, baked side whole potatoes, carrot, peas, and everything to go with it. You'd 
You fixed all that for me? Uh, what will it cost? Not a dime, Mr. Benning, not a dime. This dinner is put on absolutely free through the courtesy of the Lifetime Pot Pan and Kettle Company. Well, well, that sounds reasonable. Yeah. Quiet, Mary. Uh, fellas, what do you get out of it? Mr. Benning, after you have tasted food that's been cooked in a Lifetime Pot Pan or Kettle, you'll never want to be without them. Isn't that right, Joe? That goes devil. <laughs> Mary. I answered for Joe. He fell asleep. Oh. Well, Mary, what do you think about it? Oh, Jack, you can't do a thing like this. You're having important guests like Isaac Stern, one of the world's greatest violinists, and Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. There's nothing to worry about. We drive our truck around with the back door, we prepare and cook the food in your kitchen, and your butler will serve it. You see, Mary, there's nothing to it. Go ahead, fellas. The kitchen is yours. Good, good. Mr. Benny, you're a man with a head on your shoulder. That goes double. <laughs> What? Come on, Joe. We got a job. Say, you know, Mary, this is going oh, to... Oh, Jack, Kenny, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Mary, what are you worried about? We'll be getting the best food possible and nobody will know. After all, nothing's too good for the Coleman. They're probably getting dressed for my birthday party right now. Oh, Rodney. Are you ready yet? In a moment, Benita. Just looking through this medical book. Let's see. Arthritis, asthma, athlete's foot, blisters, very berry, croup, colic, erysipelas, fever, gout, goiter, gangrene. Oh, darling, we've used uh, all those excuses. This time we'll have to go. <laughs> yes, I guess we'll, we'll have. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Wait. Here's one I overlooked. This temper. No. No, knowing Benny's friends, one of them must have used that. <laughs> uh, by the way, Benita, what birthday is Benny celebrating? He's 38. 38? 38, indeed. Imagine him saying he's only two years older than I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's stop wasting time and get ready. They're expecting us. I told Mr. Benny we'd be there early. You saw Benny today? Yes, yes. He dropped over here. You remember about two weeks ago he borrowed your fountain pen? Oh, so he finally returned it. No, he came over to fill it. <laughs> Imagine that. When we go on our vacation, we ought to leave a bottle of ink at the back door. Oh, we did that last year, and that Harry fellow drank it. <laughs> come on, Harry, come on, put on your tie. All right, all right. Oh, what a wasted evening this will be. Wish I could stay at home and listen to some good music. By the way, you know that new record I bought? I almost know it by heart. Really? How did it go? Open the door, Richard. <laughs> Richard, open that door. Come on, darling, help me. I'll rap on the table. Oh, God. <laughs> Stop being so silly and get dressed. All right. You know, as long as we're going to Benny's party, I think I ought to change my dress. What's wrong with the one you have on? It's clean. Then why change it? <laughs> my dear, have you ever seen Benny eat soup? Soup? He puts a spoon in each hand and goes after it like a mix master. <laughs> All right, darling, let's go. Well, we must find it pleasant. I do hope you remember Mr. Benny's friend. Let's run over them once more. Who is Don Wilson? He's the fat one. Okay. <laughs> and, um, Phil Harris? Uh, the one with the blue lips. Oh, yes, yes. The ink was indelible. <laughs> now, um, Benny Jay. Well, he's the silly one. Well, that's right. And Mary Livingston? She's the normal one. Good. Now, if she ever got mixed up with that bunch of flamels, I'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Lonnie, come on. We mustn't keep them waiting any longer. <laughs> Oh, hello, fellas. Welcome to my birthday party. Hiya, Jackson. Then he had to return. Hello, Jack, and congratulations. Hello, Mr. Benny. Well, I'm glad you all got here early, kids. And don't forget, Dennis, you're going to sing happy birthday to me, aren't you? Oh, yes, sir. Good. Happy birthday to you. Happy no, birthday. No, no, not now. Not now. I'll tell you when. Oh. Now, come on in. Come on in the other room. Phil. Phil, I can hardly believe my eyes. What's the matter, Jackson? The way you're dressed. Hat and leather shoes, white tie and tail. Yeah, and get a load of these white gloves and that cane over my arm. Yeah. Well, Phil, where'd you get that black eye? I never should have passed that pool room dressed like this. 
Well, anyway, Phil, you do look nice. Do I serve the cocktails now, Mr. Bennett? Not yet, Rochester. We'll wait until every... John, don't mess around the table. We've got everything set just right. I was just admiring it, Jack. It looks wonderful. But what's the idea of having that bed seat over those four chairs? Those aren't four chairs. What? That's a bench we lifted from the bus stop. <laughs> Jack, you did Mary, it's only for a little while. And anyway, kids, we're going to have a fine dinner and lots of fun and... Well, Dennis. Huh? I noticed you brought a little package to my birthday party. Uh-huh. Ah, oh, Dennis, you don't have to blush. Come on, open it up. Not till we get to the table. What is it? My lunch. <laughs> After all, it is my birthday. It seems that somebody could have brought me Jack, something. Jack, I brought you something. Look, a birthday cake. Huh? Well, isn't that beautiful? A birthday cake with 38 Lucky Strike cigarettes on it. Isn't that wonderful? John, what's the cake made out of? It's made of that fine, that light, that naturally mild. No, no, Marshall. no, Don. That's so round, so firm, so firm. John, I know about the Lucky Strike. I and mean, how about the cake? No, thanks. I'm on a diet. Oh. <laughs> anyway, it's nice of you to put 38 cigarettes on it. Hey, Jackson, who are you trying to kid with that 38 stuff? You're a lot older than I am, and I'm 35. Happy birthday to you. Dennis, Happy quiet. Birthday. What did you say, Bill? I said that I'm 35 years old and I don't even show it. What are you talking about? You've been studying music for over 35 years. He doesn't show that either. <laughs> I agree with you. 35. When is your birthday, Bill? Well, I was born April the 21st. That comes under the sign of Taurus, the bull. What does that mean? People born under Taurus are usually handsome, popular, and have nice, stable manners. <laughs> Oh, Harris, with material like this, you better make money fast, kid. <laughs> You're not kidding. Poor as the bull. Mary, what were you, what were you born under? Elsie the cow. Elsie the cow? It happened in a boarding house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Olivia, to think your sister babe nearly took your job away from you. <laughs> Mary, another joke like that, and you'll be asking Dave for her autograph. And this is nothing to kid about. The Zodiac is a very interesting subject. It most certainly is, Jack. You know, I was born under the sign of Leo, the lion. You were? Dennis, what sign were you born under? A ticket sign. My mother was out on strike. <laughs> now, Dennis, stop being silly. And that goes for all of you. And now watch it tonight, will you, kid? You know, I'm having some very important people. Who's all going to be there, Jackson? Only a world-famous violinist, Isaac Stern, and Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Ronald Coleman? Gee, I like the way he talks. If I were king, I love if I were king, what tributary nations would I bring to stoop before your scepter? And to swear allegiance to your lips and eyes and hair. <laughs> Dennis, you sounded just like him. That was very good. Thank you, Benita. <laughs> all right, Dennis, all right, that's enough. Now, kids, remember what I told you. Rochester, seals at the door, please. Yes, sir. Oh, good evening, Mr. Mr. Coleman. Good evening. Hello, man, Jacob. May I? <laughs> May I get your wrap, Mr. Coleman? Oh, I didn't wear any. It's so warm up. Uh, how about your hat, Mr. Coleman? No, I didn't bother with a hat living so close. Oh, well, would you like a dollar's worth of nickels? <laughs> nickels? I think the clock machine's about ready to pay off. <laughs> Why, Robbie, Benita, welcome to my birthday party. Well, congratulations, Jack. Many happy returns. Thank you, thank you. Come on in the other room. You know my associate. Well, if it ain't the kid from Shangri-La. Hello, Ronnie. What do you hear from the high lava, bud? Phil? <laughs> <laughs> Phil, the party just started. Control yourself. <laughs> uh, here's Mary and Don Wilson. It's nice to see you again. Hello, Mr. Coleman. Hello. Hello. Well, Ronnie, you don't know how happy I am that you and Benita came to my party. It's a pleasure, I'm sure. It's a pleasure, I'm sure. <laughs> well, what's that? Do I hear an echo? What's that? Do I hear an echo? Damn it! Cut that out! Benita, <laughs> <laughs> darling. <laughs> You know, you know, Ronnie, Ronnie, you'll have to excuse Dennis. He, you know, he always likes to imitate famous people. 
No, it, it's really, it's amazing, but sometimes it can be embarrassing. Uh, uh, Mrs. Coleman, here, have a piece of Jack's birthday cake. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes, and here's an ashtray. I mean, a fork, a fork. <laughs> it's very good, though. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Isaac Stern. Well, well, Mr. Stern, I'm sure glad you got here. Come on in and sit down. Thank you. I'm so tired of standing. Standing? Yes, somebody lifted the bench from the bus stop. <laughs> oh, oh. The that chief got a hole in it with this. <laughs> Quiet, Roger, sir. And Mr. Stern, you know my gang, Mary, Phil, and Don. Oh, yes. Hello. Hi. 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 I don't believe you've met Dennis. Dennis, this is Mr. Isaac Stern. How do you do, Dennis? I've listened to you many times on the air, and I've enjoyed your singing very much. Dennis. Dennis, the man paid you a compliment. Huh? Say something. Happy birthday to no. you. No. Happy birthday. Dennis, no, not yet. See, uh, uh, I, he's a little excited because it's my birthday. And now, Mr. Stern, I want you to meet two very charming people. They're very, very close friends of mine. In fact, we're neighbors. Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Well, this is indeed an unexpected privilege. Thank you. I feel the same way. In fact, had we known you were going to be here, we wouldn't have hesitated about coming. I, uh, oh. I mean, uh, we would have come earlier. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. And, uh, Mr. Stern, we haven't seen you since your last concert at the Los Angeles Philharmonic. It was really thrilling. Yes, it was really wonderful. Mr. Coleman and I were there that same evening, and we were simply carried away. Yes, Mr. Stern, I particularly liked the way you played the Mendelssohn Concerto. I never heard anyone else do the Allegro to Molto Appassionato. Well, I think the, that particular movement called for Molto Appassionato rather than a more reserved approach. Well, I thought... Oh, shut up! <laughs> Mary, Mary, that's no way to talk to Mr. Stern. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Stern, you know, I thought that the Mendelssohn Concerto could be played moto appassionato or allegro con moto. I mean, it could go either way, you know, like, like a Studebaker. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I mean... Uh, one has a moto in the front and the other has a moto in the back. <laughs> Mary, we're having a serious discussion. Now, Mr. Moto. I mean, Mr. <laughs> I mean, Mr. Cerno. Uh, Mr. Cerno. <laughs> Mr. Cerno. I've heard, uh... Mr. Cerno, I've heard some violinists play the Mendelssohn Concerto, Moto Appassionato, and others play it andante. Well, Mr. Benny, that has been a controversial subject. I see. Uh, Mr. Harris... As a colleague and a fellow musician, what do you think? Look, Bob, don't let this monkey suit I'm wearing fool you. <laughs> Phil, please. Oh, Mr. Benny, dinner will be served in a few minutes. Thank you, thank you, Roger, sir. And don't forget to serve the caviar first. Oh, no caviar tonight, boy. Why? That servant's name was Louie, not Louise. <laughs> Oh, well, then we'll, uh, we'll just have cocktails. Uh, Mr. Stern, would you consider it an imposition if we asked you to play a number for us before dinner? Oh, that would be wonderful. I'd be happy to play for you. As a matter of fact, uh, sheer coincidence, of course, I just happened to bring my violin and accompanist with me tonight. <laughs> hmm. My birthday, that could have at least asked me. I would have refused anyway. Who's going to take that chance? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Is there any composition you'd uh, care to hear in particular? Mr. Stern, in your repertoire, do you happen to know Open the Door, Richard? <laughs> what? Bonnie, I strongly suggest the thing. Mr. Stern, there's one number I always love to hear on the violin. It's uh, the Anopsi Concerto. Oh, that's my favorite number, too. How about it, Mr. Stern? Oh, I'd be very happy to play that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
grand, grand. Mr. Mr. Stern, that was really excellent. John Garfield couldn't have played it better. <laughs> Jack, he's still referring to the picture humorous where John Garfield was a violinist. Mr. Stern did the playing. Oh, yes, yes, I should have known. Uh, you know, Mr. Stern, it's wonderful how in pictures they can always get somebody to do something for somebody else. In Lost Weekend, Phil Harris did the drinking for Ray Milan. <laughs> and for that, they gave him an Oscar. With blue lips? No, 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 red eyes. And by the way, uh, Ronald, uh, Ronnie, speaking of pictures, you know, I saw the preview of your new one, the late George Atley, and it was simply wonderful. Oh, thank you, Jack. Just recently, I saw one of your pictures, too. And which one? The late horn blows at midnight. <laughs> oh. When did you see it? He went to the funeral. Quiet. <laughs> and now, folks, with a little encouragement, I'll be glad to play a violin solo. Dinner, sir! Thank you, Manchester. <laughs> well, as long as it's on the table, we might as well go in. Come on, everybody. Come on. <laughs> Hey, Jack, this is the best grub you've ever had at your house. Yes, Jack, I've never tasted such good food. Yeah, what food? These things melt in your mouth. Dennis, those are ice cubes. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad you're all enjoying it. After all, it's my birthday, and I thought I'd go all out. Not out of doubt. Mary, please. <laughs> hey, Jack, this roast beef is simply delicious, isn't it, Benita? Yes, I wonder if I get off with some more. Certainly, certainly. There's more where that came from. Rochester, more roast beef, please. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Anybody want more butter for their baked potatoes? Yes, yes, bring in more butter. Yes. Put the sugar bowl in your pocket. It's ours. <laughs> Anybody want more bread, carrot, cheese? Tommy, what are you doing? Emptying the sugar out of the bowl. Oh, you needn't bother. That's ours, too. <laughs> Mr. Stern, why don't you put down the violin and eat something? I thought somebody might ask me for an encore. Oh, we'll, <laughs> we'll have that after dinner. You know, it is just... I think we've had dinner wrong all the time. This dinner is simply wonderful. Mm, I've got salt in the let me eat. See, I'm full. Me too. Oh, come on, don't stop. Now eat some more, eat some more. No, Jack, I couldn't eat another bite. And I'm not one to make speeches, but if I were king... I'd love if I were king. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Jack, after this marvelous dinner, I want to tell you how much we appreciate your inviting us here. My pleasure, I'm sure. And Jack, this being your birthday, I want to take this opportunity of wishing you many, many happy returns. Well, my friends, I'm so happy that you could all be here tonight on my birthday. I'm glad you enjoyed the dinner. And I hope that next year... All right, folks, you won't have a chance to taste the food. Now listen to me. What? This demonstration dinner was put on here tonight, free of charge, by the lifetime, Pop, Pan, and Kevin. Wait a minute. Why, Bob? Mm -hmm. that goes double. Demonstration dinner? The lifetime, Pop, Pan, or Kevin. It's available on each different size, is raising a price from a dollar and a half to four seventy-five. Come on, Benita, let's get no, out of here. No, you don't. Hey, Joe, lock the door. Lock the door? Don't you dare. This is an outrage. We're going to... No, ain't. There's one like you at every demonstration. You float yourself on free grub, then you want to leave. Don't lock the window. Now, wait a minute. I knew this. Now, was here's not. an important fact about the lifetime kettle. It's stainless steel. It's dirty. I'll show you. Not on my hair. Come on, Benita. Let's go. Ronnie, Ronnie, Benita. Mr. Stern, you can't go. Don't go, please. Wait. Wait. Look, Mary, it wasn't my fault. Honest kids, I didn't know this was going to happen. Still, you know I... Look, kids, answer me. Somebody say something. Happy birthday to you. These bucks from Pans are guaranteed for life. And they're a wonderful birthday, birthday gift for you. Yeah, yeah, happy birthday. Everything happens for me. Ladies and gentlemen, savings bonds are vitally important to the nation's battle against price inflation and for the future and welfare of us all. It is important that we continue to build financial security for ourselves and for our children. Protect your future. Buy extra bonds now. Thank you.
Mr. Isaac Stern was accompanied at the piano by Mr. Alexander Zakin. Now, Jack will be back in just a minute. But first, here is my good friend, Mr. Basil Rysdale. As you listen to the piano with the back of the years, remember LSMFT. American Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. Here are the words of a man who's been an independent tobacco buyer for 29 years. Carl Hartfield of Greensburg, Kentucky, he said. I can report what I've seen with my own eyes. At auction after auction, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine tobacco. Good, ripe, prime wheat. Tobacco that's got real smoking quality. I've smoked Lucky's for over 28 years. Yes, season after season, independent tobacco experts like Mr. Hartfield can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Real Lucky Strike tobacco. L.S. and F.T. Lucky Strike needs fine tobacco. For your own real deep down smoking enjoyment, remember. L.S. and F.T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Never so embarrassed in my life. It's certainly what you knew. Yes. And I had to play my violin job. I tried to anyway. What's the But you know, Benita, that was a delicious dinner. And I was just thinking, you know that little party we're giving this Saturday? Yes. Do you think those men would... Ronnie, you wouldn't dare. <laughs> Thank you. 